Now, as always, I like working on interesting trees. Many of these trees have come to us for remedial work. And as you can see, this is a Japanese white pine. Over the years, bonsai nurseries in the UK have been importing the Japanese white pines from Japan. They come from either Saitama or Shikoku, uh, sometimes also from the southern uh, provinces of Japan. So we used to import these by the hundreds. And I'm not sure if this was originally from us, but this lady says that her husband presented her this tree more than 20 years ago. And believe it or not, in the 20 years, she has never repotted this tree. And as you can see, it is rising out of the pot. It's about an inch out of the pot. The roots have been pushing the tree higher and higher, so it's popping out of the pot. But, surprise, surprise, this tree is still alive and in very good health. But it has lost its shape. The original shape of this tree would have been somewhere like this. So all this part would have grown over the years. One of the branches would have grown big. And it is no longer what we call a decent bonsai. So she's asked me, she's given me a free hand and told me to do whatever is necessary, including, of course, the repotting, to make this tree look presentable. Well, many people will give the right arm for a tree that, like this. It certainly looks like a bonsai, but for those who are more discerning will know that this is not as it should be. So let us see what we can do to this tree. One of the reasons why I like uh, doing bonsai is that it is very much a problem-solving exercise. And having an inquisitive mind coming from a scientific background, I always look at each bonsai as a challenge. And each tree that is brought to me, I regard as a problem. And when you have a problem, you've got to find the solution. I always believe that whatever problem you have, there will be more than one solution. There is seldom just a single solution to any problem. So let us look at this tree and see what we can make of it. I could do something like this. I could turn it at this angle. And then perhaps cut that off and still have a very conventional tree with the branches like this. And it's got a nice line like this. So we're going to get rid of that. If you cover it up with a bag, you can always get some idea before cutting the tree off what the tree would look like. So I think we could remove that branch and make it a conventional tree and wire all the branches down and have this as a nice open front. So that would be quite acceptable. But you can see we'll have to change the angle quite radically. The other problem with having that is that it may be difficult to pot it at that angle. It's possible, but difficult. So what else can we do? I could cut that off and just leave it as it was, or cut this off and use that as the apex. That wouldn't be so good. Looking at this side, which is the original back, you could perhaps do something like that too. and have a very conventional, informal upright tree, tight tree. But because of this long sweeping branch, I thought that there are possibilities for making this a cascade tree. It could cascade down like this, and that would be quite nice. It would be unusual, and it would make the fullest use of this long sweeping branch. So, looking at it again, 
I think I will go for this solution because this may be the most interesting solution for this overgrown pine. So let's work towards that and see what happens. Because I'm going to try and bend this, I might do the branch splitting technique where I use a branch splitter to split this trunk to make it come down a little more. We did a YouTube video where I showed you the use of these different tools and this tool is what we call the branch splitter. It's different from the ordinary branch cutter. It's got these very very sharp blades, very sharp blades and they are almost like incisors. So when you pierce the trunk, let the blades meet. So you go all along the trunk and I'm going to split this thick trunk down the middle so I have two thinner pieces of trunk which will make it easier to bend because I want to bend it over there so this becomes more bendable. So it won't kill the tree in case you think it will kill the tree it won't because the sap will continue to flow up and down the trunk. Very useful tool to have and it's particularly useful for working on conifers. Not so much deciduous trees but conifers would benefit from the sea already it's feeling much easier to bend. So I'm going to bend it down. Now I have to take that branch down so I have to anchor it on something so I'll probably anchor it on that and the greater wire I use will have to be quite thick when I say quite thick I think this is only like three and a half millimeter wire so I'm going to take it all the way down so this is the length of wire I need tell people who come to learn from us that most of these basic procedures such as wiring will only be improved by constantly practicing it. The more you practice the better you get at it. There is no shortcut. Like any skill that is neuromuscular, it has to get into your muscle memory, whether it is swimming, dancing or whatever. The more you practice, the better your skill. Okay, we've put a double coil of wire. You can see it's meant to be tidy like this. So if you keep it close and tight together, it will look quite nice. You've noticed here I've used two anchors, one anchor here, one anchor there, because I'm going to do something with this to create the top for the cascade. But the main double piece of wire is needed to bring this down.
I think at this stage I'm going to put it in its pot and then do some more wiring. But meanwhile, I will just see how the roots are. It's absolutely solid. hardly any mycelium in this, the beneficial fungus. And I've got a cascade pot. So the tree is going to be like this, so it's like a semi-cascade tree. Normally I would plant this quite high up like this but because this is going to be so proud and I don't want to break too much root I may have to plant it deeper initially and then lift it after a couple of years. So I'm going to just pot it. I don't need to show you the potting process. I'll get it done and then I will continue to do the wiring. I've now potted this tree up in the cascade pot. I couldn't cut away too much of this root for fear of taking too much root off. So it's a bit proud and I've had to set it more this side. In a couple of years time I could raise the tree more and push the trunk further that side but for now I've got to leave it on the edge of the pot out of sheer necessity because this will be better for the tree. So you can now see the final effect. This is the back of the tree where there are more branches. I haven't wired every single twig. You can wire every single twig to give it more definition but for the purposes of this YouTube exercise, uh, if we compare it with the original tree, you will see that it is quite, quite different from how we started off. And this is a very respectable semi-cascade tree where we've got some pads of the branches coming down and this branch coming this side. We could tie it guy wire and bend it more this way. And it's got a little apex. So once this grows strong, we can create more of an apex and uh, the beautiful trunk line here we've exploited that to the full rather than just cut the tree off there which we could have done and we have this lovely semi cascade this is one of the back branches there's several back branches so I hope you've enjoyed seeing how we've done this tree and including the repotting of this tree I think we've spent in total about 30 minutes although the YouTube video will be shorter than that and it can sh just give you some idea as to how quickly you can transform a tree that has lost its way and bring it back to some semblance of its grandeur. It's not a big tree I would say it's no more than about 60 centimeter long and the height would be about 35 centimeter to 40 centimeter, not including the pot. And there we are. I hope my customer will be happy with what I've done to this tree. There you go.